complete pleasure to share. Because uh, I just have so much, um, so much gratitude for this recognition. Because really, for the first time in my life, I'm learning to completely love myself in such a beautiful way and it really resonates with me this idea of contriving an identity and contriving love because I just tried so hard I tried so hard to just like myself um, I was very focused on my identity and I was I was really taught by others to focus on my identity so from quite a young age, I, I grew up in a sort of in a sort of community, I guess, where I stood out to be different. So uh, I grew up in Scotland. I have a Scottish mother and an Egyptian father. So I looked very different from the Scottish kids. So from a very early age, I, I learned that I was different, that I was special, but special sometimes in a good way and also special in a bad way. So I was very. Um, very paranoid about this identity that I couldn't get rid of. <laughs> I, I couldn't change who I was. Um, so yeah, I spent many years either trying to fit in or, or really trying to cultivate a lot of a defense around myself to protect myself and protect my family. I felt very um, like our family was under attack. Uh, some quite unpleasant things happened. So I, I sort of grew up with, um, I decided that the way to survive in this quite aggressive environment was to be very confident and very competent. Um, so I, I had to be the best at school and I had to be, you know, outspoken and opinionated and it, it seemed to work. So I really, <laughs> I really cultivated that super confident uh, and the big irony was is I didn't feel confident inside. I didn't feel like I had the tools for confidence but I was somehow managing to trick everyone <laughs> and eventually I sort of tricked myself so and what I find just being involved with all of you here and, and, and the training is that those defenses just melt away. They are just melting away. And it's, it's beautiful. It's completely beautiful. Because as my defenses melt away, I, I see everyone so openly. And I see other people's defenses very openly and lovingly now. So I can be in situations with people that are not involved in this training. And, um, and, and can feel completely at ease with all of their strategies because I know them completely. I was like something, that yesterday there was a kitten on the cactus. That's what I used to be like, <laughs> spiked by everything that was going on. You know, the tiniest, you know, if someone looked at me in a certain way, I would have a million stories about that look. And those stories could be with me for days. Um, so yeah, I'm just a, I'm a lion hanging out on the cactus. <laughs> <laughs> and just to say about the, the mainstays, because when I first um, came to this, well, I came across this in, um, in, in Goa, so I was sort of having my first time out traveling, and I'd left my job in London, and I was like, hi on life and I really felt wow I've empowered myself I've come to India I've, I'm brave you know I took my rucksack I left everything behind and you know I'm in this gorgeous place and and then I remember the kind of the, the, the kind of suddenly feeling not happy and thinking oh my god like how can I not be happy here you know I must be really messed up you know I've, I've chosen the most amazing life and still that unhappiness and anyway I was walked past Magic Park and there were you know a couple of trainers talking to about 20 people just 
small gathering. And I, I sat in a few <coughs> of the meetings and I had a million judgments. Oh my God, it was like, I shocked myself how many judgments I had about the trainers, about what they were saying. And I just thought, well, that's, that's not how I feel. I don't feel relaxed in every moment. And, um, you know, the world is definitely not perfect as it is. I had a lot of um, ideas. I had a lot of ideas about the way the world should be and I'd spent a lot of my life, you know, working in campaigning organizations. I was really like focused on social justice and I really devoted all my working life to it. Um, so I, I, I thought, well, these guys have got it wrong. You know, let everything be as it is. No way. Got to change everything. <laughs> everything. And what's <coughs> so incredible is that having been now involved in this, the, the mainstays for a few years, I see that the change that I wanted for everything and everyone is happening. Easefully. You know, I've, I've been in big organizations that put millions and millions of pounds into grassroots social change. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Unless an individual is empowered, no institution or no set of circumstances are ever going to be permanent whilst the, the war and the injustice within is raging. Forget it. So, um, so I've given up my job now and I've given it up because I had the confidence to know that if I immerse myself more in this, it's going to be a very beautiful thing for me and a very beautiful and powerful thing for the whole world. And this is a tiny but very profound example of what's possible of how people can live together.